For this tutorial, I am using Lion Brands Hometown USA. This is a super bulky weight yarn, size six, so you can sub any of that. And you're probably gonna need around three or four of these balls because this pattern takes around 200 to 220 yards. This is the color Riverdale Tweed. I'm also going to be using a size nine millimeter hook. To begin, you are going to chain six and then slip stitch into the first chain you made in order to form a ring. We are going to be working row one inside this ring. Chain four. This beginning chain four will count as a double crochet in a chain one space. Now we are going to make three double crochet in that same ring. Chain three. And make three more double crochet in the ring. Now we will chain one and double crochet into the ring so that it looks like the other side we started with. At this point, you should have eight double crochet, two chain one spaces, and one chain three space. This chain three space will be the point of the triangle scarf. Now we are going to chain four. All beginning chain fours will count as a double crochet chain one space from here on out. Turn your work. I'm going to refer to groups of three double crochet as a cluster from here on out. In our first chain one space, we are going to make one cluster. Chain one. Skip over the cluster below. And in our chain three space, you are going to make one cluster, a chain three space, and another cluster. This is going to continue the shape of the point. So since we're in a chain three space, we need to make another chain three space before turning up and going up the other side. So this is what it should look like. In that chain three space, you should have two clusters separated by a chain three space. Chain one, skip the next cluster, and in that last chain one space, we are going to work another cluster. And to finish, we will chain one and double crochet in the third chain of our beginning chain. This is what it should look like. You will need to increase in every chain three space and at the beginning and ending of every row to keep the triangular shape. So here's our chain three space, and that keeps the point there. And then at each corner or each end of the row, you should have a chain one space and a double crochet. And that's just gonna keep the triangular shape as we go along. Now we're gonna chain four. Again, that counts as a double crochet in a chain one space. Turn your work. In that very first chain one space, we're gonna make one cluster.
chain one, skip the next cluster, and make a cluster in that chain one space. Chain one, skip the next cluster, and you should be at your chain three space. In every chain three space, we are going to make a cluster a chain three space and another cluster in that same chain three space. Now we're going to work our way back up the other side. So we're going to chain one and we're going to skip the next cluster and work another cluster. Chain one, skip the next cluster, and in our very last chain one space, we're going to make another cluster. Now, to finish off this row, you need to chain one and double crochet in the third chain of our beginning chain below. So this is what your piece should look like. You should have that chain one double crochet at the beginning of your row, in the end of your row, and you should have a chain three space in the center. So you're just gonna continue to repeat row three until you have a total of eight rows. I have typed it out here for you so you can pause the video and just complete it until you have a total of eight rows completed, and I will meet you back when you have eight rows done. So here I have my piece. It is eight rows done, and this is what it should look like. You realistically could continue to repeat row three until it's the size you desire, but I wanna show you how to make rows of puffs and V-stitches to make it more visually appealing. At this point, you could change your colors so your puffs and your V-stitches are more noticeable, like the one I'm about to show you here. So for this one, I use two different colors. I use the color Peanut and the color Fisherman. And I just repeated two rows of row three in between these different puffs and V-stitches. So this just makes it pop out a little bit more and it looks really cool when you put it on. Chain four and turn your work. So this is how you make a puff stitch in this particular pattern. It is usually one more yarn over, but because this yarn is so thick, I shortened it. We're gonna make a puff stitch in our very first chain one space instead of a cluster. So that's yarn over, insert your hook into that chain one space, yarn over, draw up a loop. We're gonna repeat that a few more times, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. One last time, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. At this point, you should have nine loops on your hook. We are going to yarn over and draw through eight of those loops that are on your hook. So just kind of hold that last loop with your finger so that you don't accidentally go through it. We're not going through that last loop. So you're gonna yarn over and pull through all loops except for the very last one. And now you're gonna yarn over and draw through two. And that's just gonna seal that puff stitch. Our V stitch is going to be a double crochet, chain one double crochet in the same stitch or space. So now that you know what a V stitch is, you are going to go to the middle double crochet of our next cluster and make a V stitch. It's no chaining in between. You're just gonna jump right into that V stitch, no chains. 
and that's a double crochet. A chain one and another double crochet in that same stitch. And this is what it should look like. You should have this puff stitch here and then a V stitch here. So we're just going to continue on alternating puffs and V stitches. So you're going to make a puff stitch in the next chain one space. So we've got puff stitch, V stitch, puff stitch. So now we're going to do a V stitch in the second double crochet of our next cluster. That's just a double crochet, a chain one, and another double crochet in that same stitch. So you're just going to continue on all the way down till you get to your chain three space. You're going to have a puff stitch, a V stitch, a puff stitch, a V stitch, all the way down till you get to your chain three space. And I will meet you there. So here we are at the chain three space, and we are going to work, instead of clusters, a puff stitch, a chain three space, and another puff stitch. So it's the same concept as when we are doing cluster stitches. It's just this time we're doing puffs. So you're going to make a puff stitch and then a chain three space and another puff stitch in that chain three space. And that's what it should look like. You should have two puffs separated by a chain three space. And then we're just going to continue on up the other side, alternating puffs and V stitches all the way up until our last chain one space. So here we are in our last chain one space. I've made a puff stitch. Now we're going to chain one, just like we always do, and put a double crochet in the third chain below. And this is what it should look like. You should still have that double crochet chain one space at the beginning and the end of your triangle. All right, now we're going to do two rows of cluster stitches, just like our row three repeat, but it's going to be a little bit different on the next one. So chain four and turn. That still counts as a double crochet chain one. Now we are going to do a cluster stitch in our very first chain one space. So that's just three double crochet. Now we're going to chain one and skip the next puff stitch. Find the chain one space of your next V stitch and work a cluster in that chain one space. Now we're going to chain one and skip our next puff stitch. In the chain one space of our next V stitch, make another cluster. So you're just going to repeat this. Chain one, skip the next puff stitch, cluster in the chain one space of the next V stitch. And you're going to continue this until you get to the chain three space. And I will meet you there. So here we are at the chain three space. We've got our puff stitch, chain three, puff stitch. In that chain three space, we're going to make a cluster and then a chain three space and another cluster in that chain three space. We're
We're going to chain one and skip our next puff stitch and do a cluster in the chain one space of the v-stitch. And you're just going to repeat that all the way up to our last chain one space. So here we are in our last chain one space. We're going to make another cluster. And to end it, we need to chain one and double crochet in our third chain. And this is what it should look like. We're going to repeat row three once again. That's just another cluster row. And then after that, you're going to repeat the puff stitch row, which is a row nine repeat. So rows 9 and rows 12 should be puff stitches. So you should have a total of 12 rows, and rows 9 and 12 should be puff rows. All the other rows should be row 3 repeats. So this is what it should look like when you're done, and I'm going to show you what mine measures. It's around 27 to 28 inches. and about 15 and a half inches to the point. So now we're going to add ties. So don't fasten off when you've gotten row 12 done. We are going to just go right into making the ties. So you're going to chain 56 loosely. And I say loosely because this yarn can be kind of finicky. You don't want to do it too tight. Now we're going to work in the back loop only, which is that top bar here. And you're going to skip the first chain from your hook and loosely slip stitch all the way down. So you should have 55 slip stitches when you are done. So continue making loose slip stitches in the back loop only all the way down, and I'll meet you there. So here we are. I'm back to where we started. And now we're just going to continue across the top. And we're going to put two single crochet for every double crochet post. So put two single crochet around every double crochet. So just continue this all the way across, and I will meet you at the end. So here I am at the end. We're going to make another tie before we fasten off. So go ahead and make another tie exactly like the one you did over here. So you're going to chain 56 loosely, and then loosely slip stitch in the second chain from your hook and all the way back. So here I've got my second tie made. I'm going to fasten off. And I'm just going to weave this tail in. I'm showing you how I weave it in just so you can kind of get an idea of how to make it look uniform in shape. Now we are going to add some tassels to the end of the ties. This will help weigh them down. So now you're going to cut a piece of yarn about 10 inches in length. And using the Lark's Knot and a smaller hook, you're going to go through the tip of one of the ties. Now we're going to open those ends and just kind of set it aside. I use my fingers and I'm just opening up to about probably four to five inches wide. And I'm wrapping my fingers 15 times and cutting the bottoms to make tassel tails. You, of course, could use a piece of cardboard. And I'm just going to set them in the middle right here and tie these tails around. I'm going to tie it several times to secure it. 
And then I'm going to cut another length of yarn about 10 inches long and use the gathering knot to secure the tassel tails so they don't just go wild everywhere. So make a loop like I'm showing you here and about an inch down from the top of the tassel, you're just going to wrap that longer tail around several times. You can go as many times as you want. And then take it back through that loop that you created whenever you have wrapped it enough times. Then you're just going to hold on to that tail and pull up on that shorter tail. And then tie it tightly and it'll hide that knot up underneath the tassel. Then you're going to cut that top one off and then cut the bottoms evenly so that they look more uniform. Then you're going to repeat this process to the other tie. And now I'm going to show you how I add fringe around the front. So I'm just going to use this DVD case that I've got here. It's about five and a half inches wide and it's just easier. It's got this nice little groove for my scissors. I really like it. And I'll show you about how wide it is in case you want to use cardboard or whatever. About five and a half inches wide. So I'm going to cut enough fringe so that there is one piece of fringe per stitch all the way up until I'm going to count down four puff stitches and stop there. So you're not going to put fringe up above that because it's going to be in the back of the neck. So you're going to go all the way around until you get to the top and then count down four puffs and stop there. Don't do fringe here. So for if you follow my pattern exactly, you're going to need to make 69 pieces of fringe. I'm just showing you how I do it for a few of them. So I'm going to go through the back loop only of the stitches. Technically, it looks like the front loop only because you have the right side of the piece facing you but it's technically the back loop only and you're just going to put your hook through the back loop only and using the lark's knot attach each piece of fringe The reason that I say the back loop only is because it's going to leave a nice ribbing and it's going to make it a little bit more distinct. You technically could put it through both loops if you want, but I think it looks better in the back loop only. So you're just going to continue putting fringe all the way around like I showed you. I wanted to show you one more thing. If your fringe is wrinkled, you can use a flat iron that you use for your hair to straighten the strands. It's actually a lot easier whenever it's on a mannequin or hanging up or something, but I just wanted to be able to show you. So you're just going to get the strands as straight as you can and straighten it like you would your hair. You're going to want to use a medium to a low setting so you don't burn the fringe or melt the fringe. So just continue doing that all the way up and you are done. Your Kalana scarf is complete. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.